Good morning. Welcome to Round Hill United Methodist Church on this wonderful Sunday, a Sunday that we call Holy Humor Sunday. And you may be wondering, why do we call it that? It's a day in which we get uh, a chance to essentially laugh at the devil, to laugh at, at the fact that uh, Jesus has conquered sin and death. And uh, then this uh, second Sunday of Easter, we get to celebrate in it uh, with uh, fun uh, in some of the ways you might not expect us to be able to do in church, but we're going to be uh, very casual, a lot of uh, fun and laughter during this time together. So I'm glad that you could be with us uh, if you're here in person or if you're with us online. It's a, a great day to come and to celebrate Jesus' victory over sin and death. If you are with us online, uh, this is an opportunity in the comment section that you can comment with one another. But later, when we lift up our joys and concerns, the comment section is uh, very important as we can see those comments and we can share that with the greater uh, body of Christ. And so you can send those comments in later as we lift up our prayer concerns. But as we prepare for this day of fun and laughter, I invite us to, to go to the Lord in a time of prayer. Almighty God, we give you thanks for this day in which we get to laugh, we get to have fun, we get to celebrate that in this season of Easter, we are a people who are full of joy for what your son has done. We are, are full of gladness that sin and death have been conquered. And so help us to have fun today, fun in you, fun in what you have done for us in a celebration of the victory over sin and death. And this we pray in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. In just a moment, we are going to sing our first song, which is Victory in Jesus. Uh, but on Holy Humor Sunday, it's not just good enough to, to sing. Uh, we're going to have a little fun while doing it. So we do have some musical instruments uh, for us if you would like to join in. And this is not just for the kids, let me just say that. Uh, there are some uh, fun musical instruments over here. Some of these uh, nice little, yeah, wooden sticks, there are rain makers, lots of wonderful things. I invite some of you, if you would like, to come and get a musical instrument to join, and we're just going to uh, have a lot of fun uh, while we sing Victory in Jesus. So uh, if you would like to grab one of these musical instruments, we'll, we'll give a, a second while we do that. And then we're going to test to see how well our musicians can do while we... Uh, really throw them off with our, <laughs> our beat. So uh, we'll give a second for these to go out, uh, out and then uh, page 370 is where you'll find victory in Jesus, but it's also going to be on the screen. If you're at home, find a way to, to make noise. Uh, you have even more things at your disposal at home, pots, pans, whatever you'd like. Uh, let it be a time of fun and joy. And so we'll just give a, a second for uh, those to go out. Uh, and is there anybody else that still wants one of the musical instruments? I think over here? No? Right, now invite us to stand as we are able and let us join in singing Victory in Jesus.
I loved it. I loved especially the symbols. Great touch to that. That was great. So now you are starting to get a taste of this uh, wonderful Holy Humor Sunday and the victory that we are claiming and uh, the celebration we're having. Uh, today, uh, we are going to have a lot of fun uh, as we do some of this. So I'm going to read our scripture and then we'll go into our next part. Uh, the scripture this morning comes from 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 15, beginning with verse 51. It says, listen, I will tell you a mystery. We will not all die, but we will all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised and perishable, and we will be changed. For this perishable body must put on imperishability, this mortal body must put on immortality. When the perishable body puts on imperishability and this mortal body puts on immortality, then the saying that is written will be fulfilled. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh death, is your victory? Where, O oh death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin and the power of sin is the law. But thanks to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved... Be steadfast, immovable, always excelling in the work of the Lord, because you know that the Lord in the Lord your labor is not in vain. The word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. So this morning, as we join in a time of humor, of a time of celebration and a time of laughter, I want to begin with uh, some jokes. But uh, the part that's going to be the, the fun part this morning is that the jokes are not going to be coming from me, uh, but I will need two volunteers. You don't have to think of the jokes yourself. I have a list of jokes, but what I have is two volunteers that are going to participate in the game. And the game is this. You will be reading off jokes to one another, and you can't laugh. And so it's a, a game of not laughing at the one another's jokes and to see who can do it best. So I need two volunteers to participate. I, I see one over here who's ready. Uh, do I have another volunteer that wants to participate in this game? Who has a, a stern face or who's got a good delivery for jokes? Oh, we're going to have a sister off? It looks like it. All right. So in front of you, there are two sheets. Each sheet has different jokes on them. So you can choose, and you go back and forth. You cannot laugh. If you laugh, you lose a point. So, or actually, if you laugh, the other person, uh, you gain a point. You don't want points. So this is, you know, golf. High score is bad. So the way that is going to go, this, this group over here is going to keep score for Riley. This group over here is going to keep score for Tessa. So if Riley laughs, y'all will hold up a one, two. Hopefully you don't have to use multiple fingers, but that's why I'm, I'm getting you because if they're a laughing bunch, I only have five. So let's start. Uh, we'll start with uh, the elder, uh, and the elder can begin. 
What does a baby computer call his father? Data. Did you know that first french fries weren't cooked in France? They were cooked in Greece. After an unsuccessful harvest, why did the farmer decide to try a career in music? Because he had a ton of sick beats. <laughs> oh yeah, I can laugh, that's all. I'm not, I'm not playing. <laughs> How do you find Will Smith in a snowstorm? You look for fresh prints. <laughs> I only seem to get sick on weekdays. I must have a weakened immune system. <laughs> weakened immune system, you get that one, yeah? Sorry, I'm just adding to it. Whoever stole my copy of Microsoft Office, I will find you. You have my word. <laughs> They're good. They're good. <laughs> Maybe. My wife asked me the other day where I got so much candy. I said, I always have a few Twix up my sleeve. She almost laughed at herself for that. <laughs> What do you call a line of men waiting to get haircuts? A barbecue. <laughs> I don't get why Marvel doesn't use the Hulk to advertise more. He's basically one big banner. Wow, I'm impressed by them. They're trained. <laughs> I found a wooden shoe in my toilet today. It was clogged. All the inventions of the last hundred years, the dry erase board has to be the most remarkable. <laughs> My hotel tried to charge me $10 extra for air conditioning. That wasn't cool. I just found out I'm colorblind. The news came out of the purple. It's easy to convince ladies not to eat Tide Pods, but harder to deter gents. <laughs> <laughs> What's the difference between a well-dressed man on a unicycle and a poorly dressed man on a bicycle? A tire. A tire. <laughs> The difference between a numerator and a denominator is a short line. Only a fraction of people will understand this. I hate my job. All I do is crush cans all day. It's so de depressing. So depressing. Uh. Have you heard about the new corridor of pillows? They're making headlines. <laughs> she doesn't care. <laughs> <She doesn't. laughs> <laughs> Where do pirates get their hooks? Second hand stores. <laughs> I can't take my dog to the pond anymore. The ducks keep attacking him. That's what I get for buying a purebred dog. Purebred, ah. That took me a second. What brand of underwear do scientists wear? Kelvin Klein. Kelvin. Oh. Little science joke. I just broke up with my mathematic, uh, mathematician girlfriend. She was obsessed with an X. <laughs> Which days are the strongest? Saturn, Saturday and Sunday. The rest are weekdays. What do you call a beehive without an exit? 
Unbelievable. <laughs> After an unsuccessful harvest, why did the farmer decide to try a career in music? Because he had a ton of sick beats. Oh, I think we used them all, and they didn't laugh, so let's give them... That was impressive, I have to say. Um, those were some really bad, horrible jokes, and I will uh, give that credit to your dad for training you uh, through dad jokes of not laughing for years. Uh, and so uh, we got the congregation to laugh, though, so that is good. Now, why did we do this? That's a question. Why did we do this? Because today is a day all about laughter. Today is a day about joy. Today is a, a day about celebration. Easter is a season. Easter is not just a one-day thing that we celebrated last week. Easter is a day, uh, Easter is a season, a, a time of celebrating a victory over sin and death. This past week, I celebrated uh, another celebration. It was my wife's birthday. And as I celebrated that, I realized my family has some kind of unfortunate birthday timing. Uh, my wife's always is around Easter. My daughter's is Christmas Eve, so it's always a around these great holidays. Uh, mine, however, was always great. Summer birthday, always a good time. You're never in school for your summer birthday, which was great. And then you could have things like pool parties and, and great water activities at your parties. One thing I remember the most was this one time where we had a great water balloon fight. And it was so much fun. And as the birthday boy, as the prized you know, person of the day, I got this amazing water balloon that got to use. You know, it was the, 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 this huge water balloon that took two hands to hold. And I was the one that was special to get it because I was the birthday boy. And I couldn't wait to use it. I mean, I felt all this power in my hands by having this balloon. I couldn't wait to douse my friend in it. Yes, the same friend who was a Cowboys fan I talked about last week. It, it was like this joy that was coming over me of just seeing how much water was in it and how much uh, I would get to just throw it and, and splash my friend with this water balloon. And so as I got ready and the game began, I chased after him. And as I was going around the corner of the house, I quickly realized what was going on. But it was too late. It was a trap. I had been tricked. As I rounded the corner, all of my other friends were there with water balloons, and I quickly was pelted with them all. This water balloon that I had that I thought was this great massive water balloon did nothing for me. I think I threw it in frustration or out of you know self-defense, and maybe it hit somebody or maybe not. Who knows? I was getting pelted. In fact, my sister was in the window upstairs, even dropping balloons from the window above me down on me. I mean, I was just getting rained on by all of these balloons. And in fact, when I thought it was over, my dad comes and brings the big tub that he had used to fill all the balloons with and just dumps it on me as like the final grand finale for it. I went from thinking I was this great, powerful master of the balloons to being humiliated quite quickly. And on this Holy Humor Sunday, that's a kind of what we're celebrating. No, not my birthday. We're, we're celebrating this quick turn. This turn from the devil thinking that he has all the power and has won to essentially being humiliated by Jesus. This loss, this time that it's a, a flip, a, a turning of the tables, and now all of it's gone. I mean, in just a moment, the, the devil has thought he has killed the, the Son of God and has claimed victory over the, the world. And three days later, all of a sudden, the resurrection happens and all of the power that he thought he had vanishes. Now, this Holy Humor Sunday is maybe not a, a time that is widely celebrated in this uh, day and age, but it is something that goes back a long time. It's a uh, a phrase known as risus pascalis, or the Easter laugh, which goes back at least to medieval times. And in these times, pastors would tell jokes. 
They would play pranks sometimes on their congregation. Don't worry, not this year at least. And it would be this wonderful time of laughing, of celebrating Jesus' victory. When you think about it, that's pretty cool. We don't normally think of medieval times, right, as a time of revelry in the church, and we think of strict medieval, sit in your pews, get slapped if you say anything bad. This is a time where they're telling jokes and laughing in medieval times because this is the joy of Easter, the joy of the resurrection. And so we carry on this celebration today. In fact, even in the, the Bible and Scripture, Paul gets in in this laughter in his own way. Paul, as he is writing to the Corinthians, is celebrating the resurrection, and yet there are people who do not see the benefit of the resurrection for themselves. They don't see how it pertains to their own salvation. And it makes sense. We celebrate this resurrection and this victory over death, and yet people have died since Jesus has risen. And so people are starting to say, well, what's it all worth? We're still dying. Has he really won? And so Paul says, yes. He's won because there's this thing called the resurrection of the dead, where we believe that just as Jesus has been risen, uh, just as Jesus has risen, we too will rise with Jesus when he comes again. Whether that means we are with him while we are still alive when he comes or whether we will be risen in some way that we don't know, we will get to live eternally with Christ in that new creation. There's a celebration that he's lifting up, but the people aren't buying it. They're saying, "I, I don't think so. And so Paul responds and says, if there is no resurrection for us, then there was no resurrection for Christ. If we don't believe in our own ability to have this eternal life, then why do we believe that Christ could have been resurrected? What was the point of Jesus rising from the dead if we too do not inherit that? He, he celebrates this fact of what Jesus has conquered, what Jesus has done, and says it applies to us too. That's the victory. It's not just that Jesus has conquered it, but that because Jesus has conquered it, we get that victory as well. And this is where he starts to do the, the kind of uh, laughing aspect. He, he quotes Hosea and he says, you know, Where, O death, is thy victory? Where, O death, is thy sting? He essentially laughs in the face of death, saying, You've lost your power. You've lost your power, death. Now, that sounds hard to us to accept sometimes because we know that death still exists. We know that death is a reality. And we can see in our own world that pain that sometimes death can trick us into thinking that it has still won. We lose a loved one and and we experience that pain. We have our own health crisis and we experience that fear. But what Paul is pointing out and what is Paul is laughing at is the fact that because of Jesus, this death is not the finality that we once thought it was. That it has lost its power, its hold on us of saying this is the end, because it's not. Through Jesus Christ, it is not the end. Because of Jesus Christ, we live forever. Because of Jesus Christ, though we die, we shall live. And this is the good news that he gives us. The good news that Though our loved ones die, we have hope that they are with Christ. Though we face death ourselves, we have hope and eternal life with Christ. That the fear, the, the, the sin and death that, that so much seems to have a hold over us is gone. Not gone as in the fact we don't face it, but gone in the power that it holds. It comes at us like this kid with a giant balloon thinking it has all the power and quickly realized it was fooled. It has no power at all. That's the joy of what we are celebrating today. That's why we tell jokes. That's why we laugh because it is worth celebrating. It's worth joking about. It's worth being glad and happy for that Christ has conquered sin and death. So that's what we celebrate on Holy Humor Sunday. Jesus' victory over death and the celebration of 
But the devil and death and sin does not win. It's been conquered. It's over. Jesus wins. Amen. Now we're going to sing another song, but of course this is Holy Humor Sunday, so it's not going to just be a normal way of us singing it. So the page is 307, but, and I'm throwing this uh, as a curveball for Rita as well, so uh, uh, the, last, the last line, there's this great phrase in this song. So the, the tune is uh, a tune you might recognize even if the song isn't. Uh, the tune is uh, a tune uh, that we might know from A Christmas Carol. Uh, but the last line has a, a line in it that says, Christ is risen, or, or it says, tell its grim demonic chorus, Christ is risen, get you gone. So essentially we're shouting at the devil saying, get you gone. Now I don't want us to just sing that when we get to it. I want us to actually shout it. So when we get to that, get you gone, I want us to, to I want to hear you shout, get you gone, okay? And if you don't, we're going to start it all over, not the whole thing, but we're going to start, we're going to start verse three over and we're going to do it again. So y'all better be ready to, to shout, get you gone. You got it? All right. So let's stand as we're able. You can, of course, play your instruments again in celebration, but let's sing Christ is Risen. Christ is Risen, shout Hosanna, celebrate this day of day. Risen, hushed in wonder, all creation is amazed. In the desert, all surrounding, see a spreading tree has grown. Healing leaves of grace abounding, bring a taste of love unknown. Christ is risen, raise your spirit from the caverns of despair. Walk with gladness in the morning, see what love can do in there. Drink the wine of resurrection, not a servant, but a friend. Jesus is our strong companion, joy and peace shall never bring. Christ is risen, earth and heaven, never more. Job, guys. Y'all might be seated. I don't know if it was the excitement or just the fear of singing it once more. That, uh, but that was great. That was great energy, and I loved it. At this time, though, we go to the Lord in a time of prayer, uh, celebrating the ways in which God is with us. Uh, if you're online, you can start to send in uh, those comments in the comments section, uh, joys or concerns, and we'll be able to see them in just a moment. But are there any joys or concerns we'd like to lift up from those worshiping with us uh, in person this morning? Yeah, I would uh, ask for prayers for uh, Kathy as she's uh, going in to get a rotator cuff repaired on Friday. And I hope the surgery goes well and all that, and that we survive the recovery. (laughs) Prayers for Kathy Bird and uh, her rotator cuff surgery that's upcoming. Well, happy birthday to you then. <laughs> yes. The joy for Holy Humor Sunday. Absolutely, it's a, a great day, and we're glad that you could be part of it. Prayers for your aunt as she gets into nursing. Cousin, cousin as she gets into nursing. All right. Prayers for a uh, co-worker whose father is in a stage liver failure or just in the hospice. 
prayers for our co-workers, fathers, and uh, liver failure and, and hospice at this time. Another uh, co-worker who's going through chemo and radiation and doing work and all that uh, through it, so prayers indeed. Mom, and okay, prayers for the whole family. I appreciate that. And we'll definitely lift up mom as uh, she has celebrated her birthday this week. Prayers for a friend, uh, Ruth, who has brain surgery tomorrow. Prayers and thanksgiving for everyone who helped make Holy Week so special, and thanks to all who donated lives to the cross. Absolutely. So thank you to everybody who made Holy Week last week so special, all the work behind the scenes, and all those who helped to donate the, the flowers to make the, the cross uh, a beautiful sign of God's resurrection once again. So thank you all. <laughs> Prayers for Glenna Blaine, who uh, had a fall and surgery this week. Uh, Butch Continue to pray for Butch Ehrenholt. Any others here in person? Any online we'd like to lift up? We do. We have a couple. Prayers and comfort and healing for Butch Ehrenholt, who is home from the hospital but needs continued prayers. Also, prayers for Stan Kelly of Bluemont, who fell, broke his hip, and is having surgery today. Uh, praise from Jen Malfair for Beatrice as she celebrated her 18th birthday last week. And then also from Jim Malfair, praise also for a great weekend in South Carolina where Bo has decided to attend college at USC. Wonderful. Well, with that, let us go to the Lord in a time of prayer. Lord, we give you thanks for the celebration and the reminder of your victory. And sometimes we need that reminder as we face the hardships of this world. Uh, we face the pain of illness, of cancer, of diabetes, of dementia, and so many others that attack our, our bodies and remind us of our frailty. But we give you thanks for that reminder of your victory over sin and death. And we ask that you be with those who are in the midst of that suffering and give them the hope, uh, but also give them that comfort that they need. Be with their loved ones, be with their doctors, be with all who care for them uh, during this time. Lord, we give you thanks for those you put in so many of our lives whether it is family or friends or whether it is the strangers of, of caretakers that uh, we don't even know. We give you thanks for their love and comfort and compassion that you show us. And it's another reminder of your love for us and for this world. We pray for our nation, for those who are suffering, for those who continue to battle with mental health, with struggles of anxiety or depression with addiction we pray for those who are battling with economic struggles of housing or mortgages or food or utilities or so many things that can so easily pile up and weigh upon us and lord we ask that you use us as your church to reach out and be a support to those who are in need. We pray for those who are suffering from natural disasters across our nation and across the world, and from those suffering from those disasters made by our own hands, from war, from oppression. And we ask that you may use us as your church, not just here, but across the world as a sign of your peace, of your love, of your mercy, of your victory even in the times that seem the darkest. And all of this we pray in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. 
that we don't often think about it, but when we gather each week for communion, it is a, a celebration of the victory of Jesus. We sometimes only think about it of what Jesus has done for us, but as we even say during our great Thanksgiving, we celebrate the, the mystery of faith. Not only Christ has died, but Christ is risen and that Christ will come again. We celebrate a presence of Christ with us even here today. And so as we gather around the table, I invite us to hear this invitation that Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors. We have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. And that proves God's love towards us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. And now as people have experienced that love and peace of Christ, I invite you to offer it to one another. If you're online, you can do that through the comment section with words like peace of Christ be with you. If you're here in person, you can do it in whichever way you feel comfortable. So let us offer the uh, peace of Christ to each other. Now, as a forgiven and reconciled people, let us offer ourselves and gifts to God. I invite the ushers to come forward as we give of our tithe and of our offering.
Lord, we give you thanks for these gifts and for the victory that you have claimed over sin and death. And we offer these gifts as an opportunity to share that good news, not only through this congregation, but throughout the community and world, so that others may experience it through our words and actions and deeds that this church may do. And this we pray in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. This time I invite us to join in the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right, and it's a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. Your spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, proclaim release to the captives, recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, he fed the hungry, and he ate with sinners. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. When the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always by the power of your word and Holy Spirit. And on the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took the bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper is over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice and union with Christ offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, one a ministry to all the world till Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Now with the confidence of children, let us pray as Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us to evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, the glory forever. Amen. The body of Christ is given for you. The blood of Christ is poured out for you. The table of our Lord is prepared. This is not my table. It is not the United Methodist Church's table. It's the Lord's table, and all are invited to come and receive his grace at the table. We'll do this in a means called intinction. 
All that simply means is that I'll hand you the piece of bread and you can take it and dip it into the chalice. We also have a gluten-free option, which will be right here uh, in the middle. And we have some prepackaged elements if that is something you are more comfortable with as well. At this time, I invite my uh, communion assistant to come forward. And then I'll invite the members of a staff uh, to come and receive first. Body of Christ given for you. Body of Christ given for you. And then you all may come and taste and see that the Lord is good. given for you. Body and blood of Christ given for you. mystery in which you have given yourself up for us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. This we pray in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Before our benediction, just a few announcements uh, to lift up. The first is just a reminder of Sunday school uh, that we will we are beginning again with Buck Denver uh, for the children and that the uh, adult Sunday school is uh, continuing to meet uh, also in the uh, fellowship hall. So that's at nine o'clock. So you can come before worship and join uh, for children's Sunday school and for uh, a time of adult Sunday school as well. Also, we are for the hometown festival looking to try to put together a team for a 5K or walk. Uh, that's a Round Hill UMC team. Uh, and so if you're interested in being part of uh, just a, a fun uh, team that uh, is part of a celebration of uh, our, our community and our church, 
Uh, contact me, pastor at roundhillumc.org. Uh, please contact me by May 1st so I can uh, just get together how many people we expect to, to have on our team. If we have a certain amount, we can get a special price. Um, but let me know, uh, and uh, that information uh, is in your e-note, I believe, uh, and should be on your screen every once in a while as it circulates as well. Um, with that being said, I think that's all the announcements that I have this morning. We have one over here. Thank you. I don't believe you have an announcement, but I will ask you anyways for some reason. That is a good announcement. Thank you. I'm glad I asked. There is food downstairs, uh, so if you'd like to, to stay afterwards, uh, you can uh, join with some of the food. Any others? If not, then for our benediction, I invite us just to, to shout that uh, get ye gone or get you gone one more time as a celebration of uh, Christ's victory. And then after you do, let's make our noise with our, uh, our noise makers, whatever we have. And so uh, I'm going to say in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And after I do that, I want you all to shout get you gone. And then we're going to make a noise and, and that'll be our benediction. Okay. So now I invite you to go forth. As a people of victory, of a people who have won and conquered sin and death through the love of Jesus Christ, so go forth in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Get you gone!